Hello guys and welcome on beautiful Eichberg. Today I want to show you the Foxier Legend 3, very tiny 4K capable cam. And you know me, I've done a lot of tests and comparison shots with other cams, being the Runcam 3 and the Yi 4K and as well the Legend 2, its predecessor. comparison now sharpness comparison white dynamic range Comparison Yi versus Legend 3. Oh, yeah, and while we're at it. Nice view from up here. Once more comparison of all the four camps and 1080p60. Four K thirty handheld. And a lot of branches and the park. Comparison of the different resolutions. Now you see 4K 30 handheld, 4K 25 in super view mode, and super view mode, it's kinda, the aspect ratio isn't right. 2160 with 30 frames, now this is 27K with 4x3 aspect ratio and 30 frames. 2.7K super view 30 and the sun is picking up so this ruins my whole shot this is normal 2.7K 30 1440 60 which is 
also interesting. 1080, 30, 60 and 120. 120 would be really cool slow-mo, but I think the image quality suffers here to quite an extent. 1080p 60 super view mode. Once again the image is squashed. And this is the only one of the lower resolutions that I will show you. It's 720p 240 frames. So this is the extreme slow motion of this cam. It does zoom in quite a bit and the quality really suffers. So not really usable. Dynamic contrast here in the, in the bright light. Mm. And I have it set to spot, which should be in the center. And we have a train situation going on there. <laughs> all, all five minutes or so. Ah. Here I'm filming on my DJI Osmo mobile. That's my mobile recording station. I will just show you how it looks with the legend. For these kind of reviews I always tend to have a small box which the cams are attached to. So I can get the same angle. This is a true 4K cam. That means it's not interpolated like many other cheap cams. It's around $150 so it's, it's a nice price tag. It is not the best form factor for these really tiny quads where you where you can attach the, the box size uh, cams maybe better. They will also put this hardware in a box shaped uh, cage which is really interesting and really uh, maybe even better than the GoPro session but we will see about this. Of course this is cool for plane pilots because it has lower drag from the front. What's in the box? Uh, it's a really tiny micro USB cable for charging and transferring and it's this micro USB to servo leads where you get power and video, so live out. I also got this little silicon protective case, plastic glass lens protector in front. We get some extra protection here. It's also easier to find with this orange color. I don't think it comes in the box, it's a separate accessory. And there should also be a waterproof case. Menu functions are cool. You have two button design. Long press this to power up. This is the shutter button. You can switch modes with this button. And you can access the settings then with the other button long pressing the mode power button for two seconds or so or for one second moves you up in the menu short press moves you down and the shutter button selects the option long pressing the shutter button will get you out of the menu long pressing the shutter button will enable or disable wi-fi so that's nice as well you can use the wi-fi app on your phone which works kind of nice and you have a screen you can frame your shot and so forth Battery life is around one hour. At its slow motions, they look ugly, sorry. Don't expect these 240 frames to look nice. It's all squashed down, so the aspect ratio is wrong. And it's also very grainy. So uh, my Galaxy S7 I'm using right now has way better ways of uh, slow motion with 240 frames. So not a good slow motion cam, unfortunately. I did a time lapse, it looks fantastic, so. Uh, of course the Yi 4K has longer battery life and is more suitable for time lapses but if you attach a power bank or something like this you're fine. For flying for flying mini quads you have to use 60 frames of course to get smooth video and on this cam you can step up from 1080p 60 to 2.5k 60 so that's really sharp and you can see some interesting details when in 2.5k uh, I filmed here not knowing what was going on over there. 
I don't want to make up a thumbnail or clickbait or something, but yeah, just, just judge for yourselves. You will also see which effect the electronic image stabilizer has. I'm not sure yet if it has much of an effect. We will see this in a comparison now. 1080p60 image stabilizer off on the handheld. Image stabilizer on. Also, I don't really like the super view modes they use here. In super view, they want to use the whole sensor, but the sensor is a 4x3 sensor, so it's a wrong aspect ratio if you put it on 16x9 uh, video. I'm not sure, maybe you like it, but I don't like the, the squashed image. You could rather use the 4x3 video modes and have a cool wide angle there and yeah, use it in your editing software as you like it can set it to auto record on power up which is kind of nice time lapse time lapse doesn't take photos like the old gopros it just records video with one two five thirty sixty seconds or something like this so you can really take cool uh, time lapse with this time lapse uh, is like it looks time lapse is only in 4k so you can't change the resolution but yeah using the highest resolution for time lapse is totally fine and one thing, if you set time-lapse mode to on, don't wonder if you can't change the resolution outside of the menu. Uh, it's, it's locked, so you have to disable time-lapse and then you can change resolution again. So that's kind of awkward and yeah, the software or the, the firmware might be improved in the future. And I'm using uh, firmware version 1.2, which is the current version. You have a car TV mode where supposedly it will turn on and start recording as soon as you have external power. Exposure value, I tend to uh, dial it down to minus one exposure value. Um, because if it's darker you can brighten it up, but it's, if the, the image is blown out you can't do anything about it in the post-processing.
thanks for watching this video hope you liked it up here on the Eichberg rather than in my hangar um, thanks for watching leave me comments give me feedback there's always room for improvement you can of course ask me questions if I left something out of the review now you will see links to good quality uh, raw footage from this thing here because YouTube of course has its own compression and, and reduces the quality again thanks for watching bye